Welcome to The Proud Gardener. My name is Wendy Proud and we're here at Rogers Gardens in Corona Del Mar and today I'll be talking to you about attracting wildlife to your garden. My favorite part of the garden is the activity created from wildlife. Watching these creatures in our gardens gives us a sense of place and allows us to slow down and connect with nature. Seeing another ecosystem in action is thrilling, exciting and even magical. There's three things you'll need to provide when attracting wildlife, and these simple practices will allow your garden to become a place where wildlife can call home. First is water. Wildlife needs water for drinking and bathing. Sources for water can be endless in the garden, from a fountain, bird bath, or even a simple dish. Having a bird bath is great, but having running water is even better. Far more animals would be attracted by the sound of running water. When considering a water source for your garden, you want to make sure that you remember not to have it too deep. So if you do a low saucer or low dish, don't have any more than two or three inches of water. The birds actually want to get into the water to bathe and splash around a little bit. And if it's too deep, they won't be able to do that. The second element that you'll need to provide to attract wildlife is food. Now everyone realizes that you can put out seeds, nuts, berries, and even fruit to attract different types of wildlife. But did you also realize that you can put out just different types of plants into your landscape and it'll attract the very same animals? If you'd like to attract hummingbirds to your garden, then you'll want to focus on those plants that provide nectar and are in shades of orange and red in particular. Now, some of those plants include things such as salvias, which come in a great range of purples, reds, oranges, pretty much every color you can think of. Also lantana, another great nectar source for hummingbirds that come in a wide range of colors, and penstemons also, just to name a few. If you're looking to attract birds, then you want to focus on those plants that bear seeds, such as scabiosa, gallardia, and sunflowers. If you're looking to attract butterflies, then you'll want to focus on those plants that provide a flat flower surface for the butterflies to rest. Let me show you. Plants such as pentis and yarrow provide a place where the delicate butterfly can sit atop and sip the nectar right out of the individual flowers. Another type of wildlife that you'll want to attract to the garden are bees. Bees have a very important purpose in the garden by pollinating all of your flowers and then in turn attracting many other types of wildlife. The third element that you'll need to provide when attracting wildlife is shelter. This is an essential element because all creatures need a safe place to rest, nest, and feel protected from people, predators, and even the weather. Simply by putting in a few trees and shrubs, you have created shelter for potentially many creatures. Birds in particular might enjoy a birdhouse to raise their young, but for the most part a simple layering of plant material creates a perfect shelter and a nice looking landscape. There's a few other things you should consider when wanting to attract wildlife to your garden. And these include limiting or stopping the use of chemicals in your garden and allowing it to be natural. This will definitely attract more wildlife. Also work to improve your soil, the use of water, and increase airflow. If you'd like to review any of the information I've given you today on attracting wildlife to your garden, please visit rogersgardens.com.